Hello, Chameleon Academy. This is Bill Strand, and today I'm answering a question. Should I give my hatchling chameleon a basking bulb or UVB? There's some advice out there on social media saying don't give babies basking bulbs or UVB. So what gives with that? Well, there is some truth to that, but it's good to understand why. Chameleons are ectotherms, meaning they are cold-blooded which means that they need external heat to raise their body temperature so they can function normally. And hatchling chameleons are no different. So yes, hatchling chameleons need warmth in the day so they can function, especially if you're giving them that deep nighttime drop that we say to give them. But here's the problem. Our standard basking bulbs and UVB bulbs will easily overpower a hatchling chameleon. They are just too small to absorb all of the energy provided by our equipment. So it's not that they don't need heat and they don't need UVB. It's that we typically give them too much unless you know what you're doing. And this is why there's that advice on social media. Generally, you're talking to somebody who isn't that experienced. And so the chances that they're going to hurt their chameleon by trying to put on a basking bulb or put on the UVB is quite high especially since people use smaller cages for baby chameleons. So the combination of small space and a high basking bulb does not bode well for that little chameleon. And it's the same with UVB. Our UVB lamps are pretty powerful when you actually put a solar meter to them, and they work well for your standard four foot tall cage. But when you have a much smaller cage, a baby cage, then that UVB is just gonna overpower the area. And once again, the hatchling chameleon has such a small body space that it's very easy for them to get over-energized and die from it. So what's the solution? Well, the best scenario is that you do give heat, you do give UVB, but you give it in small amounts. Now, you may ask, they need the heat, they need the UVB, but if we don't give it to them, is that going to be a problem? Well, the reason why it isn't really a problem in execution is because, number one, for temperature, the room temperature that humans are comfortable at is actually pretty good for chameleons. And if you have any sort of T5 lighting like a 6500K for daylight, that fixture will actually produce heat. So the chameleons may be getting heat anyways. Now, as far as UVB, they need UVB to produce vitamin D3, and that allows them to absorb calcium. Chameleons are given a store of vitamins from the yolk and the egg, so they're actually ready to go for a little while after they hatch. Now, I don't know how much vitamin D3 they actually got and how long it's going to last them, so there is a time there where they may not need UVB. Now, this all isn't necessarily the best approach to husbandry. It may work, but it's not ideal. And so I acknowledge to do it correctly, you do need a level of understanding beyond what most beginners have. But that's why you're here. So let's go ahead and get that understanding. And we'll start with heat. Chameleon hatchlings do need to warm up after a cool night's sleep. Cool night's sleep are good because that allows a deep restful sleep. And that's why we say don't put any heat or lights on at night is because the chameleons need that cool night's rest. But in the morning, they do need to warm up. So somehow, we got to give them a little bit of heat. Now, the best way to give heat is by gentle heat. And what I mean by that is, say you have an incandescent bulb that's giving off heat. Well, then you move it away. So by the time the heat from the bulb gets to the baby chameleon, it's a gentle heat. We're talking somewhere in the low 80s as far as temperature. Maybe even mid 80s. But it has to be in one part of the cage so the chameleon can easily get out of it. Which brings us to cage size, and this is where it's important that a baby cage isn't necessarily as small as you can make it. Yes, professional breeders who are very good at their art, they will use smaller cages, and they can because they deeply understand how to create gradients in a smaller area. But if you're just starting out and say you've just got one hatchling, give that little hatchling a big cage. I mean, even just a 16 by 16 by 30 inch tall cage. That's pretty good for a hatchling. And that gives you some space to work with to create gradients, meaning that'll be uh, warmer at the top. And as you go down further away from it, the temperature decreases. And so the problem with having a small amount of space is you're not able to create ways of getting out of the heat. A larger cage, that gives you the ability to do that. So you can take your basking bulb, 
lift it far away from the cage. So when you put your hand right where the chameleon would bask and go ahead and put it at the top of the cage because they hang upside down, it's got to be a gentle heat where you just notice it and it's a nice warmth on your hand and nothing biting. If you've got a temperature probe, like I said, uh, low 80s up to 85 maybe. And then below that, lots of heavy foliage. That's this forest edge I talk about where you have this open area and then you have a densely planted area and that's where the chameleon can get away and escape the heat. And it's the exact same thing with UVB. I gotta warn you right now, social media is not a good place to learn about UVB. There's a lot of very crazy ideas out there. And there's a lot of strong UVB bulbs that people like to use on larger cages, which is appropriate, but they will overpower a small cage. You know all those compact fluorescent lamps that everybody says gives off no UVB and is horrible to use? Well, they actually do give off UVB. They just don't penetrate that deeply into the cage, which in a large four-foot cage, it makes the lamp useless. But if you're doing a smaller cage with a baby, all of a sudden these weaker UVB bulbs are invaluable, like the T8s. You hear how they don't go too far into the cage. Well, that's right. And now that's a good thing. And this is why it's very important to understand our tools instead of demonizing one and glorifying another one. They're all just tools to be used in appropriate ways. So you either use one of these lower power UVB bulbs or else you take your T5, 6%, 12%, whatever, and put it way high above the cage. I mean, like a 12% T5, we might be talking about 12, 14, 16 inches above the cage. And this is where having a UVB meteor is very useful. So in the end, the advice to not give basking bulbs or UVB to hatchling chameleons comes from difficulty in execution, not because the babies don't need heat and UVB. So the next question you're going to ask is, well, how do I set that up? And I'm actually working on a video on that right now. So hang tight. It'll be coming. Now for right now, I just wanted to answer that question. And so I'm going to go ahead and get back to work on that video and I will see you soon.